Hey, what's up everybody? This is Sam and welcome back to the Introducing Stack View series. In this video, you'll learn the basics of Stack View, how to create them in Interface Builder before going on to creating your first Stack View. Let's go! Here's what your app's going to look like at the end of this video. You're going to use a stack view to replace a bog standard vanilla UI table view cell with something a little bit more custom. You have an image of the pancake house over on the left hand side, a label in the middle for the name, and on the right hand side, a stack of pancakes to denote the rating. Before embarking on building your first stack view, it's important to understand some of the theory behind them. Imagine you had to construct the view behind me, the grey view with the three subviews, using auto layout. What constraints would you need? Well, to start off, you'd need two constraints to specify the distance between the subviews. Then you'd need to have some constraints to align them all along the leading edge. And then you need some constraints to specify that they all have equal height. Before finally, you can create some constraints that specify where those subviews exist within the superview, i.e., top left something over on the trailing edge, and something on the bottom. The problem with creating this very common layout in this manner is that it requires a huge amount of work. If I need to add a new subview in the middle, I've got to break a whole load of constraints and re-add new ones. That's not easy. Because this is such a reusable and common layout, Apple have provided us with Stack View. Imagine you could build the same thing without any of those inner constraints. You still need the outer ones because you need to position where this thing goes, but without any of the inner ones. That, the yellow box, is precisely what UI Stack View is. UI Stack View is a special non-rendering subclass of UI View. That means you can't do things like set the background color or override draw rect. It is solely there to manage the layout of its subviews. To that end, it has several properties that configure exactly how that layout will happen, and at runtime, the stack view will generate the correct layout constraints so that the auto layout engine can go ahead and create your layout. The first of these properties that we're going to look at now is axis. You add a load of views to your stack view. And at that point, you can choose, do I want it to lay out the subviews horizontally or vertically? Very simple. Then, spacing. This determines how much gap there should be between each of the subviews. This goes hand in hand with one of the other properties called distribution that I'll mention in a moment. Next up, alignment. Your views are arranged along an axis. And what alignment does is specify how each subview should be positioned perpendicular to that axis. Should it be to the leading edge? Should it be to the trailing edge? Or should each view be stretched to fill the whole space? And finally, distribution. Distribution says, given that I've got a stack view that's this tall, and my subviews only require this amount of space via intrinsic content size, how do we adjust them to fill the entire stack view. Before diving right in and creating your first stack view, let's take a quick look around the app as it currently stands. Stack Review is a master detail app. If you open up the main storyboard and zoom out a little, you'll see exactly that. It's a split view controller with a master view controller that's a table view, a custom detail view controller, and this empty about view controller over here. The data layer has already been completely done for you, as have the view controller classes and custom view classes that are required. If you run the app up, you'll see it is a master detail app. You can see the list of restaurants here and as you tap on each of them it takes you to the custom detail page. The about view controller contains nothing at the moment. That's going to form your challenge actually. You're going to build a stack view in there to display the about information for stack review. Head back to the storyboard and double click on the master scene. Your first stack view is going to be a custom table view cell. This might seem a little bit scary. Table view cells have been a little bit difficult to work with in the past, 
But Stack View is so powerful, it's going to make this really easy. So first of all, select the table view cell and open up the attributes inspector. Change the style from basic to custom. And open up the identity inspector and change the class to pancake house table view cell. That's a custom class that's already been created. Now you're ready to start adding the components. On the left hand side you're going to want an image to represent the pancake house. Then there'll be a label in the middle for the name. And over on the right hand side, another image to represent the rating of that house. So if you open up the object inspector down the bottom here, search for image, drag the image view. I'm putting it just on the left hand side of the content view in the cell. And then we need another one on the right hand side. And then finally, Grab a label, put that in the middle. Let's add a bit of content to those and style them up so that we can see what we're working with. So if you select the image view on the left, open up the attributes inspector. The image for this one is just something called placeholder underscore thumb. So put that in there and then the mode should be aspect fit. The image on the right hand side, you want to use an image called pancake underscore rate underscore five underscore small put that in there once again set the mode to aspect fit it looks a bit pixelized at the moment that'll be much better once it uses its intrinsic size finally the label in the middle change the text in there to pancake house name and the font just change the style from regular to thin Okay, that's all the content we need to put in there now. You can now go ahead and create your stack view. The easiest way to create a stack view is to choose the items that you want in it and then tell it to stack. So I'm going to select the left image and I'm holding down command to select this, the, the label in the middle and then the right hand image. I've got those three selected. You can see over in the document outline that they're also selected and I could have selected them in there instead. If you move your attention down to the bottom of the screen, in the auto layout section, there's this new one, looks like an arrow falling down the stairs. If you tap that, that's the stack one, tap that, and the, you've now just created your first stack view. It's taken the items that you had selected, and it's stacked them. It's determined that it looked like you were stacking horizontally, so it's decided that for you. You can now, in the attributes inspector for that stack view, you can go in and change that axis, so you've got horizontal. I can flip it to vertical and it puts them in. You can't see them because the current size of the cell is too small uh, and we do want to keep them with horizontal. But cool, that's it. You've created your first stack view and I can just drag that around. Now a stack view is responsible for laying out its content, its arranged subviews. But in order to position that stack view and optionally size it, you still need to use auto layout constraints. So to do that, I've got the stack view selected. I'm going to use the pin menu, the one that looks like a TIE fighter down here at the bottom, to just constrain this stack view to the table cell. I'm going to uncheck constraint to margins and only put a 10 point margin all the way around it. 10 point. So this is saying the stack view will be positioned in the top left of the table view cell, but it will also be stretched to the width and the height of the table cell. Okay, now you'll notice straight away that Xcode's given you a little angry red arrow. And if I tap that, you'll see it's not happy about something. It's not happy about the X position or width of some of the things inside that stack view. In fact, there are three errors just dealing with the pairwise possibilities. The reason for this is you've defined the size of the stack view, but the stack view doesn't know how to resize itself, or in fact, it doesn't know how to resize its content to match the size that you've specified. At the moment, it's got three items in there. They each have an intrinsic size, but it doesn't know, well, which one of these three do I need to stretch? to fill the available space. Equally, if we were making it smaller, it wouldn't know, well, which one of these three shall I compress? Actually, you already know how to do this. This is just auto layout constraint issues. It's the same as, same as you've had for many years. The behavior that we want here is for the 
the label in the middle should be the one that is stretching to deal with the available space. So if I select that label and then go to the size inspector, scroll down a bit, what we want is this one to stretch. So I'm going to reduce the horizontal content hugging priority from 251 to 250 and you'll see all of those red errors have gone away immediately. That's because now what we've said is out of the three items we've got in this stack view, if the stack view needs to be bigger than the intrinsic size of its content, this is the item that I want you to stretch. I want you to stretch this label. You can also, while we're here, decrease the content compression resistance priority. Now this happens in exactly the opposite case where the table view cell isn't wide enough to fit the three items in. Which of the three things should I be crushing? Which of the things should I be making smaller than the available space? And I'm just saying that, well, we'll, we'll truncate the name of the pancake house. Now that we've done that, we can resolve the misplaced auto layout views so that it positions this stack view correctly in the cell. I'm just going to use the resolve auto layer issues menu down the bottom, hit update frames. There we go. Now that's positioned. That's looking pretty good. Whilst we're here, if we select the stack view and, and open up the attributes inspector again, we can have a look at some of those properties that we discovered earlier in the video. We've mentioned axis. The alignment property determines how the elements sh should be arranged perpendicular to the layout axis. The moment they're center, and I can, as you can see, if I change it to top, then the rating image and the pancake house name both then align with the top of the view. And similarly, I can select bottom. Actually, quite happy with the center here. It would be nice to have them in the center of the table view cell. The one thing I do want to change is this spacing value. At the moment, the pancake house name is very, very close to the image on the left hand side. I'm just going to increase this to five. This determines the spacing in between the different elements within the stack view. Finally, a little bit of housework just to tile this in with the, the table view cell subclass so that they get populated correctly at runtime. Just open the assistant editor. And then in the automatic section in the jump bar, just select the pancake house table view cell. You can see that already there are three outlets in there. We just need to connect up to those. So if I grab the placeholder thumb, and then control drag from there, placeholder thumb into pancake image. The name label, control drag from there into name label. And then finally on the right hand side, control drag from the rating image to the rating image outlet. Fantastic. Now we can build and run. And there you have it, your custom view cell built with a stack view. Really simple to do and really quite powerful. And as you can see, if I rotate this, the stack view resizes automatically. You can see here it's resized the name label to stretch to fill the entire width of the device. That's it for this video tutorial. As ever, we'd like to leave you with a challenge. In the video, you learned how to create your first stack view inside a table cell. Now, as a challenge, I want you to go away and recreate the view behind me in the About View controller. There's a label at the top, an image of some lovely looking pancakes in the middle, and a button at the bottom. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.